so now moving on to the state of uh, karnataka uh, so here the access my india exit poll is projecting 20 to 22 seats this is almost like a 2019 sweep uh, of uh, uh, lok sabha elections there so but interestingly the bjp will get 48% vote share and we uh, congress will get uh, 41% so uh, here, uh, uh, there, there doesn't seem to be a bigger shift here because uh, the way uh, Karnataka, the voting pattern goes here. Uh, so there is that uh, assembly elections. Yes, we want the Congress guarantees. Uh, and in Lok Sabha, we want the Modi guarantee. At least this is the pattern we've seen over the last three elections. Uh, do you see uh, just that playing out or are there any other contributing factors to this? Well, uh, obviously, the people of Karnataka going by the verdict in the last elections don't believe in a double engine Sarkar. They like to book by two different trains as far as the governance model is concerned. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, going purely by what does one has heard in on the ground and what different uh, party sources say, especially in the Congress, they are not willing to believe this because they do believe that they, they fought a good election. Uh, that people, even though uh, they had voted against, that's one of the questions I asked to a senior Congress leader that. The people of Karnataka have already punished the BJP once. Why would they punish it a second time? They do believe that there is still anger and they do not trust the BJP once again. And they are not happy with the BJP MP's performance over the last five years. And therefore, they would not vote for him. That's what the Congress would like to believe. Uh, but yes, uh, Karnataka is a state where the Congress thought that they would do much better than what they did in 2019 when they won only one seat. Incidentally, Bangalore Rural, which they won last time, is likely to be the tight contest this time, where DK Suresh yes. may not be extremely comfortable against Devagoda's son-in-law, CN Manjunath. So that could be a tricky seat. But uh, Karnataka, they were pinning a lot of hopes. I mean, nationally, uh, the Congress would always speak about these uh, four game changers uh, um, uh, states of uh, Bengal, Bihar, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Uh, Karnataka yes. doesn't seem to be going in the same direction, uh, nor is Bengal for that matter. Uh, uh, as far as the Congress is concerned. But uh, yes, uh, uh, the Congress this time had done something very interesting. It had given tickets to a number of sons, daughters, uh, spouses of sitting ministers in the hope that, and um, one of the Congress leaders told me that this is their playing safe strategy because knowing fully well that at least this way, the ministers will work hard for the victory of their near and dear ones. Uh, so they wanted to play it safe. So has that strategy backfired? Have the people rejected this? attempt to uh, impose dynastic rule in many constituencies of Karnataka, especially in the Mumbai Karnataka region. Uh, that is something which this election would really throw up. But on the face of it, if the numbers hold true, it would really mean that the Lingayat vote which the BJP brought to the table and the Vokaliga vote which the JDS brought to, brought to the table in the southern part of Karnataka, in the Mysore Mandya region, has really worked in its favor. That would, it mm. show, I mean, it would mean that, that it has seamlessly worked in favor of the NDA. All right. Uh, so uh, also, uh, we we do have to talk about the allies of the BJP here a little bit as well, because uh, uh, JDS, uh, according to Access My India, at, at least, is projected to win three seats. Now, uh, the elephant in the room remains Prajwal Revanna's case. Uh, so what happens there? The BJP uh, would, uh, it's uh, like you said, the Vokaliga vote base is quite uh, crucial. But uh, having uh, uh, being associated with someone like uh, Prajwal Revanna branded as a sexual predator, uh, uh, how do you see this uh, ties playing out? Will they just keep it separate? Okay, fine. Uh, they'll tell JDS to just disband him. Uh, already we are seeing Kumar Swami uh, doing his best to sort of uh, distance himself from the Revanna family there. So what happens here? Uh, uh, see, um, uh, the um, the Prajwal Revanna case is not just the case of one singular MP. It's also linked to the entire Devagoda Parivar. HD Revanna is also an accused in the uh, in the con in the in the case. So you have the HD the Rev HD Revanna versus HD Kumaraswamy internal politics also uh, playing out, and HD Devagoda will have to kind of be the peacemaker. But the BJP, I mean, we have seen how they behaved in the Bridge Bhushan Singh case. So I think they let things pass. Uh, he's now in um, um, custody. He would be interrogated. Yes, the fact that the Congress government has the one which has formed the special investigation team, that would make it a little more tricky for Prajwal Revana. But trust me, if these numbers hold true in Karnataka, Karnataka is in for a bout of political turmoil. And according to me, that is going to take precedence. That is going to yeah. take center stage. If the BJP indeed wins 22 seats, and that includes 
I mean, including the three seats that of the JDS, uh, where the Congress believed it was on a weak wicket. The JDS was on a weak wicket. But if the JDS actually goes ahead and wins the three seats, uh, all those people who are writing the obituary of the JDS will have to wait a while. Eventually, the BJP may want to kind of completely control uh, the JDS. But right now, it would feel that, okay, it is still existing as a separate entity. And the Congress would find, will have to fight for its own survival in Bangalore, uh, in Bangalore itself. And that, according to me, will yeah. take center stage. So while this case is going to dominate the headlines for quite some time to come, the political fallout of this verdict would be something which... Uh, would kind of yeah. grab everyone's attention much. This political fallout, that is the thing, uh, Sudhir, because uh, in the build-up to the elections as well, there has been a lot of talk about uh, the Deputy CM uh, DK Shivkumar and Chief Minister Sidramaya, uh, whether this government will continue or not, because keep in mind, uh, Yedhirapa's uh, uh, son is the state president here in Karnataka. And uh, with this in mind, we've known them to chip away slowly, little by little. So do you see that scenario playing out? Something like what happened in Maharashtra, a scenario playing out here as well, because Operation Kamala became famous here in Karnataka. And uh, if they do get the uh, 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 smaller mandate than the BJP here in the Congress, uh, do you see this uh, scenario playing out here as well this time? Well, the arrangement one was hearing about is that if the Congress comes to power, if the India Alliance comes to power at the center, Siddharamaya will move to the center as a minister, is a union minister, and DK Shivkumar will take over. That seemed to be the a win-win situation for Sort of everyone concerned. Hmm. Now, if these numbers hold true, obviously that's not happening. Siddharamaya will continue and DK Shokumar will start to crib because he has uh, he he had delivered Karnataka in the past as the Con Karnataka Pradesh Congress president, not uh, managed to do so if these numbers hold in the Lok Sabha elections. So he would obviously be an unhappy man because his promotion wouldn't really happen. The Congress leadership, if it does not come to power, obviously also will be a weaker central leadership, a weaker high command. So it would lead to a lot of confusion. And in this kind of confusion, what role does the BJP play? What role does it play in kind of weaning away people as it has done in the past? That only time will tell. But definitely Karnataka is in for a bout of political instability. That's for sure. Pretty much uh, of that sort could happen in Telangana. One point that we forgot to miss out because... In the run-up to the Lok Sabha elections, there were a number of BRS MLAs who were waiting to join the Congress party. Now, if the Congress yeah. does not come to power here, and if the BJP is going to win more seats, they would look at the BJP as an option. Why would they want to join the Congress party, even though it's mm -hmm. in power in Hyderabad? But they would say that, okay, the BJP looks to be a better long-term bet. So, uh, so the BRS migration, uh, the migratory birds from the BRS, may be headed uh, towards the BJP instead of the Congress. So you have a number of options. And it's a good time to be in politics for different kinds of birth, migratory birds. You can go to different nests. <laughs> All right. So there you have it from T.S. Sudhi there. Uh, and uh, it could be a matter of shifting loyalties in both Telangana and uh, the states of uh, Karnataka if the BJP does manage to expand its uh, footprint in the in uh, southern India. Uh, now, uh, uh, closing thoughts, uh, Sudhir. Uh, what do you foresee happening uh, uh, when the results do play out, uh, uh, because should the Congress just be uh, concentrating on get, getting the main opposition's uh, role this time and, uh, you know, settle for that, uh, save their face? Or do you see uh, uh, any kind of surprise uh, from, uh, uh, that is different from the exit poll predi uh, predictions that we are seeing this time around? It's 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 not a very easy time. It's not a very good time to be a congressman right now because... Uh, you know, pessimism rules and uh, uh, they've tried everything. I mean, to be fair to them, they fought a good battle. They fought a good election. Uh, but obviously, I, I mean, the exit poll uh, findings would indicate that they have not really um, been up to the mark. At least the people have not endorsed that. Uh, the South was seen as a place where the BJP was not able to make inroads. This election could decide whether they have succeeded even to a, in a limited extent. The other um, uh, narrative which the Congress and the other parties like the DMK, the Karnataka Congress, Pinray Vijayan used to talk about is the North-South divide that, you know, the southern states contribute so much more to the national kitty, but we get much less. Whereas states like UP and Bihar, we are yes. actually contributing for the development of UP and Bihar. Uh, if the BJP manages to win more seats in southern India, despite such a narrative, it would mean that such a narrative is not finding currency even with people in South India. 
And that would be a matter of worry for the Congress because they need to get their narrative right. The second narrative which they have kind of focused on is a caste census. Is the OBC mm -hmm. voter actually coming out and voting for the um, um, for the Congress thinking that, oh, he's talking about the caste census, jitni abadi, utna hak, so I will get more. Is he talking about that? If these figures um, uh, are to come true, obviously that's also not happening. No, no. So the narratives, the strategy of the Congress, they have to go back to the drawing board and think, okay, what is it? Where is it that we are going wrong? Obviously, the caste census, even in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, where it should have actually got, I mean, um, uh, gained some currency, it did not in the November, December elections. Now in the Lok Sabha yeah. elections, also if it does not uh, uh, find um, favor with the electorate, obviously there is something wrong with the slogan itself. People are not buying into your theory of, you know, um, more reservations for the OBC classes. I mean, people are not buying into that. So it's it's not an easy time to be in the Congress. They have to go back to the drawing room, think about what in what way they can. This criticism for the sake of criticism is not a great strategy. It's definitely not yeah. a great strategy. Yeah. And I think they should stop, you know, doing that thing of, you know, let's keep attacking Narendra Modi for whatever, uh, whether he signs with the right hand or whether he signs with the left hand, we will criticize him nevertheless. You know, that kind yeah. of mindless criticism strategy, I think will have to be thrown out of the video. All right. So uh, there you have it from uh, T.S. Sudhir. Uh, basically, uh, we the Congress may have to go back to the drawing board again, but that we've said right from 2014 election, 2019 election. So maybe they have to change the drawing board itself this time around. But we will have uh, keep continuing this, uh, this discussion going after the election results are out as well. Uh, we'll look, look forward to having you once again with us, T.S. Sudhir. Thank you for joining okay. us today.